Hello everyone. This is Brandon Green, better known as Gold Element Auto Works. This is my garage where everything takes place. All my custom car work, all my uh, repairs, things that I do when I'm buying and selling, when I'm uh, modifying, customizing, uh, when I'm doing car audio, video, uh, rims, uh, just fixing, I mean just everything. This is where it all takes place. A two-car garage, nothing special. Uh, this is just proof that you really don't have to have a dedicated facility or um, a big garage in order to do some very special things. Um, today, though, what I want to discuss is um, what I have recently been dealing with. I picked up another 2003 um, SL500. It's kind of, there you go, you can see it right there. Okay, now when I got this car, a lot of things didn't work. Um, things such as, uh, everyone's familiar with the suspension, the hydraulic fluid suspension, the ABC suspension. Those go out over time. I don't care how much these cars cost, from eighty to $130,000, these ABC suspensions will eventually give you problems. And that's why a lot of times people get rid of them. Um, in my case, on my CL55, I got rid of my ABC suspension. And I put the uh, yellow speed uh, racing coilovers, adjustable coilovers on that. And um, it's been very good to me. Okay. Now with this one, let's see. This 2003 SL500, like I said, when I got it, it was all the way to the ground. It was scraping. The fender was bent from the wheel turning and going up onto a curb. Um... It was leaking out the back, okay? So what I decided to do was to start removing some stuff, take the wheel off, take the uh, fender lining out, and see where the leak was coming from. Thankfully, I found out where it was at. It was one of the lines. The line was ruptured. I had that in a separate video with the fluid shooting out under high pressure, and it's crazy looking. But that's, that's what would happen anytime you put fluid into the uh, reservoir it was it was just you know building up that pressure and it was shooting out the back so that line um let's see which line was it let's see it was uh this line okay you can see the tear in it so it was shooting out what i wound up doing is just cutting the line in order to remove it from the car um, it's the line that runs from the front driver's side all the way to the back uh valve block um that line had a rupture in it had a had a tear in the rubber part. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, when I got this car, my initial intent was to probably swap out the suspension and just do a coilover. There's a couple options out there for the adjustable coilovers on these cars. Um, because I had a silver one right there uh, that was operating pretty good. Um, you know, the ABC has some issues when you hit hard bumps and if you're sitting there and idle, the car will start to raise. But my intent was to maintain that as long as I could. And then just go ahead and just do a coilover swap on this one. But just the op opposite happened. A week after I got this black one, the silver one failed. A line ruptured on that one. Shot all over the place about a mile away from the house. And so it bottomed out and blah, blah, blah. So now I'm pissed because now I have two SLs with ABC suspension issues. This was the tear on the other one. Um, it, I kind of made it, I kind of tore it uh, a little bit more, but right there at the joint where it's pressed into that right there is where it started to, uh, come unraveled and it started uh, pouring out. Uh, so now I have two SLs with suspension problems. So what I wound up doing is taking what I needed to fix this one from the silver one. Okay. I took it from the silver one. There was a line. Uh, let's see, I have to upload a video of that, but the line that runs from the front pulse uh, accumulator uh, to right behind the driver's side wheel, um, that one went bad on the silver one. But that line that runs from the driver's side front to the rear that I needed for the black one, I just took that from the silver one. So I fixed it, added fluid, um, put everything back together, and so now the black one goes up and down. The ABC warning light is out. Um, I haven't road tested it yet, but 
So far, so good, no leaks, and it's operating properly. That surprises me because most of the time when you let these uh, pumps run out of fluid, I'm not gonna say they burn up pretty quick, but there's a lot of premature wear. And then you also could be possibly introducing metal uh, particles inside the closed system. And so once you do that, um, you start messing up other parts throughout the system, uh, seals and whatnot. Um, like I said, I don't know if any of those things occurred because I haven't put it on the road yet, but I know it's going up and down and it's holding pressure. So, okay. So what is my intent with the silver? I will be doing a coilover suspension swap. Now I've been reading forums on them and they're saying with the SL that you need sway bars, um, front and rear sway bars, and you need the power steering pump from a ML55. Why that one? I don't know. Because I know with my CL55, I wound up using a power steering pump from a S500 um, between, I think you use a one from 2000 up to 05 or 06 or something like that. Why they specify ML55, I don't know. Um, but I have also done a Struntmaster uh, coilover suspension swap on a CL500, and I kept the tandem ABC pump in there. Basically, only half of the pump is uh, serving a purpose, which is the power steering part, and the other part just run, ran empty, and it has worked ever since. So do you necessarily have to change it out? No. Is it heavier? Is it three times heavier than a regular standard? power steering pump yeah so if you're trying to decrease the weight of your vehicle for maybe just race purposing handling i don't know just decrease the weight of it yeah the cumbersomeness of the factory abc pump you want to get rid of that makes sense if you want to just simplify the system makes sense if you want to make some money makes sense because you can take the abc tandem pump throw it on ebay it makes some skrilla um, i think i sold mine for probably 350 375 something like that um, close to 400 and then I bought a um, regular power steering pump from 03 S500 for approximately like 60 70 bucks so I was able to keep that money so with this one do I need the sway bar links they said I need the sway bar rather than the sway bar not not the sway bar links but they said I need the sway bar for the CL55 I didn't it handles just fine. It's not like I'm tracking it, putting it on a track, and and, and, and I'm desiring to get the very, very, very best performance out of it that I can. Um, if I want to stiffen up the suspension and all that kind of stuff, it's fine. It's a comfortable ride. It drives fine without the sway bars. So do I believe that you have to get a sway bars for the SL500? I personally don't believe so. I mean, show me the proof that it's unsafe without them. I haven't seen it. I haven't heard about it. People speculating, these engineers, these suspension engineers are just speculating. Might be some truth to it. I understand it makes a more stiffer suspension, more predictable handling, but is it a necessity? I don't think so. Just my opinion. Daddy. Oh, my daughter's interrupting me. Yeah, baby. All right, I'm making a video now about cars. Go back in the house, babe. Yeah, I know it's pretty. Okay, go back in the house, babe. <laughs> uh, I always put family first, but there's a time and place for everything. Uh, let's see. So that's that's what I'm that's what I have going on. Um, so I will keep you posted regarding the SL500. You see how it is lowered. You see what I'm dealing with now. Man, I think it's pretty, but it's too low, and I want it as reliable as possible. So I am thinking that I'll do a coilover suspension swap. So that is super reliable. I don't have to worry about it collapsing uh, while out of town, driving around locally, um, having to get it towed, all the stuff that comes along with the ABC suspension. You know, again, I said in another video a while back that it's not the um, expense of it. Um, it's not the affordability of maintaining it, but the practicality of maintaining it. It just doesn't make sense to me to have a 16 year old hydraulic fluid suspension and I'm nickel and diamond trying to maintain it. And at the end of the day, you just wanna jump in the car and drive it. You don't wanna have to worry, is the suspension gonna fail at any given time if you hit a bump too hard 
or if a line just decides to give way, just like mine did. I was a mile away from the house, just coming up the street, and all of a sudden, um, ABC warning light comes on to drive carefully, car too low. By the time I get to my driveway, it's scraping, and I come up onto the curb. Who wants to live like that in a Mercedes? Come on. That's just foolish. So, I'll keep you posted regarding that. Um, the silver one has 101,000 miles on it. I think I just hit 100, maybe 101. The black one has 194. So that's why I don't. I would rather put the coilover suspension on that one because the likelihood of me keeping the silver one with the lower miles is greater than me keeping this one. Okay. Just a little food for thought, something to think about. Um, if you have any questions or or opinions regarding uh, this discussion, let me know. Otherwise, I'll shoot another video once I uh, once I make some progress. Okay. Talk to you later. This is uh, Go Element Auto Works. You can follow me on Instagram at WideBodyCL55. Again, I do all my own work. Um, I did all my own work on the CL55. That included the, the, the body work, the fiberglass uh, body kit, wide body kit, the suspension swap, um, pulling all the ABC components out. Um, the rims, of course, I do all that. The only thing I... I need help with is putting tires on the rims. I take it to a shop. But besides that, I do all my rim choices and tire choices and uh, um, uh, just anything regarding the car, man. I mean, I do it. Car audio, like I said, uh, putting aftermarket decks and speakers and wiring all my stuff and the subwoofer, the amp, um, videos, I mean, uh, video monitors. I mean, just I've been doing that for, at forever. Uh, I've done a lot of custom work, uh, custom paint work. I mean, I've done all kinds of stuff. And not to really hype up myself, but I'm just saying, I try to do as much stuff as I can to keep as much money in my pocket as I can so that I can do more, so that I can have more. I have a decent car collection here. I have a GL450, GL550, an S500, a SL500, another SL500, and a CL55. And I'm always buying projects, okay? So that's what I do. That is me, Goat Element Auto Works. Um, I had to come up with an official name because I'm selling the wide body kits on eBay. And I'm sure I'll be adding to that. I mean, I'm still developing that store. So if you have any ideas of things that you think that I should sell um, on my eBay store, let me know. It's Goat Element Auto Works. Uh, look me up. You'll see a picture of my logo on there. Gold Element Auto Works um, on eBay. Like I said, follow me on Instagram and you'll see more details of, of a lot of my projects and things that I deal with on a daily basis regarding these cars at WideBodyCL55. Uh, and that's my Instagram page. Okay, until then, I'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful day.